a battle as old as, well, I wouldn't say time, maybe since Jurassic Park 3 and that whole fiasco, but a battle for sure. It is still one of the most hotly debated topics amongst dinosaur battles to ever exist. In the red corner, we have the king of the tyrant lizards, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And in the blue corner, we have the spine lizard, Spinosaurus aegypticus. Both are some of the most popular dinosaurs known in our current time. Yet for once and for all, who is the true winner of this debate? Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, bringing you the WrestleMania of dinosaur debates. The Tyrannosaurus Rex versus the Spinosaurus. As for this battle, I'll be using averages of each megatheropod because with recent papers coming out, it does suggest the T-Rex may have reached 12 plus metric tons in weight. So uh, yeah, let's just say that wouldn't be fair. Anyways, I won't waste any more time with these formalities. Let's get ready to rumble. It's only right that we kick it off with the king of the dinosaurs. The Tyrannosaurus rex was an apex predator that ruled over North America unchallenged. It measured an approximate average of 12 meters in length in 4 meters in height at the hips. It also had an average weight of 8.8 .8 metric tons. Keyword being average. Its bone structure was equally as impressive as its skeleton had a high density especially with its robust femur, which allowed it to carry its heavy weight. This allowed the rex to be durable, sustaining damage from other rexes, triceratopses, and killosaurus. On the other hand, the Spinosaurus has undergone many changes throughout the years, originally being placed at 20 metric tons before slowly being nerfed down. It likely measured around 15 meters in length and 2.5 meters at the hips. However, its peak height at the spine would have reached a staggering 5 meters. Its weight is still widely debated, However, with my averaging, it is placed around 7.7 .7 metric tons. Also, people believe that the Spinosaurus skeleton was far more fragile than it actually was. I mean, otherwise, how would it have carried itself around, let alone survive? So clearly, these were some two big apex predators. But as far as speed goes, it shouldn't be all that surprising that neither of these titans reached the speed of light. But which was faster? Which was more agile? It's been suggested in William Seller's paper that the T-Rex, as with the other larger theropods, weren't capable of running, but rather speed walked. With biomechanical reconstructions, it's estimated that the T-Rex could reach approximately 12 miles per hour, which is still fast enough to catch up to your everyday person. Not only this, but according to Eric Snively and his team, it is likely that the Tyrannosaurus was far more agile than any theropod its size. As a matter of fact, it may have even been two times greater at rapid turns and movements. Now, when it comes to the Spinosaurus, no exact research has been completed on its speed, but I think when we take a look at its build, it certainly wasn't too quick on land. I'd place it at a couple notches below the T-Rex when it comes to land speed, and as far as its agility goes, again, we don't have papers determining this, but considering how it's built and the fact that the T-Rex was far more agile than similar sized slimmer theropods, then I have to say that the Spinosaurus was significantly less agile. Taking a quick dip into the water is where it gets interesting, because it's likely that the T-Rex was at the very least a decent swimmer, with it being so large that it was capable of forcing itself through the water. However, when it comes to the Spinosaurus, things are just playing out well. Confusing. I've seen people say that it was an effective swimmer like a crocodile, with the ability to dive down. I also see stuff stating that, well, it wasn't too strong of a swimmer, but rather it remained at the shallows like a stork. But then, what was the purpose of the massive tadpole tail? Despite evidence going back and forth, I think I'm just going to give the Spinosaurus the water speed advantage. Now, if it's something that the T-Rex is known for, it's its weaponry. The T-Rex's obvious main weapon of choice was its massive jaws. These jaws were the definition of quality over quantity, and quality they were. Biomechanical studies have provided evidence that it was capable of delivering a bone-crushing bite of 8,000 to 57,000 newtons. There's also Sakamoto study, which placed the T-Rex's average bite force at 48,505 newtons. Its teeth were serrated as well as robust, which allowed it to withstand the pressure of its own bite. It's also been suggested that the T-Rex also had enough strength to rip a Triceratops' head off of its body, with paleontologist Denver Fowler noting the following. Not only this, but their large and heavy duty skull suggests that it was likely capable of ramming its opponents. This is further supported by a ridge formation which may have appeared at the top of the skull. However, this isn't quite confirmed in rather a theory, so there's that. Their limbs may have also been small, but hey, don't underestimate them. Each arm could lift over 200 kilograms. There is even the possibility that T-Rex could have used its limbs to get a hold of its prey to assist in delivering bites. However, I will say with them being so short, it seems like it may just be easy 
easier to go straight for a bite rather than just trying to get a grip with its small arms. Onto the Spinosaurus. Its bite obviously wasn't quite on par with the T-Rex, yet people continue to underestimate it just because it doesn't have an overpowered bite. It's not defenseless. The Spinosaurus still had powerful jaws that could deliver a bite force of around 11,936 newtons, according to the same study. Its tooth structure was sharp and curved, which was useful when catching fish. Probably not as good when going up against an apex predator. However, they also had a distinct advantage over the rex, this being their long arms and tail. This would allow the Spino to keep its distance in a fight and to be capable of giving slashes strong enough to tear through flesh. There's also the fact that the tail could have potentially assisted in it to get onto its hind legs and reach a taller height. Its tail could have supported its body weight, which would have assisted it in combat. Not only this, but since it was closer down to the ground, it would be harder for the rex to knock it over, as its strong and powerful arms and legs would be capable of keeping it stable to the ground. Often people think that dinosaurs have pea-sized brains, but this wasn't the case when it came to the T-Rex. After multiple studies, it has been shown that the T-Rex may have actually been quite intelligent. At the low end, they were likely above the intelligence of our modern crocodiles, and at the high end, well, it's debatable. Their neuron density rivaled that of primates, but we can't exactly know how smart they were. Either way, they may not have been able to build spaceships, but they were definitely smart as far as dinosaurs came. And again, when we move to the Spinosaurus, the issue is the lack of research available due to its fragmentary discoveries. However, other studies have been done on its ancestors, such as Baryonyx, Ceratosuchops, and Irritator, which suggests that the brains were broadly similar to other theropods. Using this and sizing it up for the Spinosaurus, it's likely that he had an average level of intelligence for a creature its size. It also turns out that the Tyrannosaurus was also kitted out when it came to its olfactory senses. Within Hugh Graham's 2019 paper, it was suggested that the Rex's scent capacity was twice of that as a turkey vulture. Now, if you don't know what a turkey vulture is, well, they're birds that are capable of detecting corpses through the tiniest gases they emit from hundreds of feet in the air. And also, unlike what Jurassic Park showed, the T-Rex's eyesight reigned supreme, with the T-Rex having an enhanced head and eye movement. Within Stephen's 2006 paper, it suggested they had a greater vision than even our modern day hawks, who could have potentially spotted prey from upwards of six kilometers away. As for Spinosaurus, it's likely that alike to the irritator, it would have had larger flocular lobes to assist in keeping their eyes steady when catching fish. This also could prove helpful when going up against a quicker and more agile adversary. Also, there's evidence that the olfactory bulbs didn't shrink for the Spinosaurus as predicted by other scientists, which would again show it would have had a similar capacity as to other theropods its size. Now, which of these two predators were smarter when it came to combat? Well, when we look at the prey as well as their competitors, we can see the answer is quite obvious. Spinosaurus would have likely hunted a mix of things, mainly including large fish, which could have weighed upwards of a ton. Smaller herbivores and smaller carnivores were likely also on the menu, which could have each weighed a couple metric tons. It also coexisted with Caracodontosaurus, and although I doubt they would have harshly competed with each other due to the different niches they took up, they still would have had the occasional confrontation. This means the Spinosaurus would have had experience in combating other megatheropods at similar sizes as its own, as well as different builds as its own. I mean, when you take a look at it, Caracodontosaurus is far more closer to a T-Rex than it is a Spinosaurus. Yet when we compare it to the Rex, we can see that there is a massive disparity. The T-Rex was literally built for combat. I mean, take a look at its most famous prey items. Ankylosaurus could have weighed upwards of eight metric tons in weight. It was literally a living tank covered in armor as well as having a clubbed tail that would have been easily capable of breaking bone. Then you go into the Triceratops, which could have even weighed upwards of 10 metric tons. Its horns could have fatally wounded a Rex if but wasn't careful, as well as having a frill for protection. And I mean, there was also the Edmontosaurus, which is underrated as it was twice the speed of the T-Rex, yet rivaled it in weight. All of these herbivores were heavier than even the Spinosaurus and arguably had even more dangerous weaponry. Not only this, but T-Rex is the only megatheropod where we see wounds inflicted by others of the same species. With numerous specimens having scars that have healed, it demonstrates that not only did they battle, but it didn't always end in death. 
and hence the Rexes would be highly experienced when it came to combat against other theropods. And the big thing here is that there is clear evidence of this occurring. We've seen marks on Triceratopses and Montosaurs and other T-Rexes. Meanwhile, Spinosaurus is so fragmentary, we don't have evidence of it, let's say, going after Caracodontosaurus. Now look, obviously Spinosaurus would have had interspecies conflict. Whether it was over prey, territory, mating rights, he would have still had it. But still, it says something that we see it the most on the Rexes. And I mean, due to the T-Rex's high intelligence, it's likely that he learned effective hunting strategies as well as combat skills as it matured in age. So who's winning this fight? The Spinosaurus has the reach, bite speed, water speed, length, and total height advantage. Meanwhile, the Rex takes the weight, strength, durability, speed, agility, stamina, endurance, IQ, battle IQ, and bite force and senses. Yeah. Clearly the Tyrannosaurus Rex has the majority of the advantages in this battle. It simply outclasses the Spinosaurus in nearly every imaginable category. Its bite force is four times as great. It's far more agile and quicker. It is also more intelligent and has experience with taking on far more dangerous sets of prey. Even if we upscaled the Spinosaurus to be equal weight with the T-Rex, the Rex is still taking it, due to it, as being stated, being built to fight. And look, I'm not saying the Spinosaurus would be helpless. I could imagine the Spinosaurus claws to be useful in the beginning of the fight, to keep its distance as well as delivering some pretty solid blows. Yet its swipes wouldn't be enough to keep the T-Rex down. Eventually, the T-Rex would find an opening and deliver a critical strike. The thing I will also note though, is that just because the Spinosaurus had a sail, it wasn't necessarily necessarily a weak point, as in if it was injured on the sail, the Spinosaurus wouldn't be just crippled from the fight, it could still fight. But you may say, hey, let's just put the battle in the water, or maybe a shallow shore, to give the Spino a bit more of a chance. Well, considering papers suggest that T-Rex was still a capable swimmer and may have even hunted using shorelines, I'd argue that the T-Rex could potentially beat the Spinosaurus in a water-based environment. I mean, I would say this until it'd be flat out confirmed whether or not Spinosaurus was capable of diving and swimming far quicker than we have it at now. And if it was more like a crocodilian when it did that, then obviously it could definitely win water. Ultimately though, on a balanced environment, I would give the battle to the T-Rex nine times out of 10. It's simply too much for a Spinosaurus to handle. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed these two going at it with our modern day science. Now, yes, yes, I know these combatants have been done to death, but hey, it's always been something I've wanted to do and what type of channel could be talking about dinosaurs, having battles with putting them against each other and not at least once put the Spinosaurus against the T-Rex. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time. See ya.